synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come by the most powerful means of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Today, you are lucky enough to get a small homily, a homilette. And I don't blame the bishop because he's doing his job. A deacon talked way too long. <laughs> blame it on deacon today. So it's not long enough. I'm sorry. Today in the gospel, we see an encounter with Jesus where he sees someone who's sick. Simon is number one. His mom. And he goes to her grabs her by the hand, and heals her of her sickness. And what is her response? She gets up and she starts waiting on them, making them food, and hospitality, and loving them. And she's so thankful for that healing. The question is, is what is our response in the blessing of God? What is our response when God shows us favor when the lights turn on in the storm or when we feel the holy spirit enact in us the power of his love we get those goosebumps when truth is spoken to us how do we respond to god in those very instances are we thankful are we grateful are we seeing god act in the world or are all we doing is pointing out the evil and seeing the evil in the world? Because it's easy to see. But we can't be people that just look at the evil doing in the world. What's wrong with the world? We have to see the good. We have to see the encounters of grace in our life because what they do is they build faith. They show us God's presence in our lives, that our prayer is being fulfilled that God loves us. Every day, every time we come to Mass, we have an encounter with Jesus in the Eucharist. Bread and wine brought to the altar, and the power of the Holy Spirit conforms it. It transforms it into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We have that encounter. What do we do with it? Are we asking for healing? Are we bringing our sorrow our dread, as the first reading talks about today. Life is dread. It's hard. We suffer. We feel pain. We struggle. Friends get hurt. People that we love get hurt. We get angry. We get fearful. What do we do with the encounter of the Lord? If the Lord stood here in person, flesh and blood, like I am standing here today, would you come and would you beg for healing? Would you ask him to lay a hand on you to heal your problems? There's no difference than that and then receiving the Eucharist. 
It is that same encounter, but you get to eat the flesh of the Son of Man. And in that, it empowers you to ask in that encounter. My mom, when I was a boy, when I was a boy, <laughs> she would always talk about her ventures when she went on pilgrimage. And she's been to Medjugorje, Guadalupe, Batania, Akita. She's been all over the world, Rome, the Holy Land. And she would talk about these miracles that she would see. And literally, we all thought she was crazy. She was this holy rosary, holy roller, this Jesus freak. My dad struggled with it sometimes because she was always at mass when he was working. I would ask him, I would say, where's mom? And he would look at me and he'd go, guess. She's on her knees in the church. And he would kind of be caustic in that, but she would bring these fantastic miracles and tell us as kids that I saw the miracle of the sun. I saw a blind person healed, a deaf people person healed. Her own heart that she had a hold in one of the ventricles was healed by prayer from a priest. And she would tell us these fantastic stories of miracles, and yet it had no effect. It's still, in my life, I went away from that. I ran from it because it was pushed on us. I did not believe until I had my own encounter. These young men and women from Menominee Falls, you may not fully believe in Jesus Christ until you need his mercy, until you need him and you cry out to him. But I tell you, don't forget he's present here. Ask for your parents, for your grandparents, for the people in your life that you love, that need God's help. Ask at this rail. Ask at this altar. Don't be afraid of the benefit of God. And by all means, talk about it with each other. Tell your families, your kids, your grandkids, your nieces and nephews about your experiences with God. And we all have it. We all have those moments where God has touched us in a very, very powerful way, but we don't talk about it because we're afraid. The gospel is spread through the domestic church. You, as families in the world, you practice and perfect love in your homes. And when you bring that perfection out to the world and you start to love, you make it in you. People may not want to feel that love from you. So you go back and you heal. And you go back into your home and you love one another so that that love can be healed. Your heart may be healed. We have to realize that God is present in our sacraments of marriage, of having children and bearing fruit. But also, he's here in the sacraments of life, confession and Eucharist, anointing of the sick, and all the sacraments we have in the church. This is your encounter. This is where you touch Jesus in the flesh, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. Do not waste these opportunities. Do not think that it's something that we do that's just a ceremony. For I have had experiences of the Lord of the Eucharist where he has spoken to me right here at the altar. He has shown me things in the host where I will see images of him or our lady, sometimes Padre Pio. And I'll end with this last miracle, in a sense, when God spoke to me right here at this altar. I think I told Deacon this once. I had an experience where it was so euphoric when I was consecrating the Eucharist. And then I went into the Our Father and I was praying the Our Father and I had my eyes closed. It felt like I was floating. And I said, please, Lord, don't let me levitate. <laughs> you know what he said to me? You haven't lost that much weight yet. <laughs> I was saying, 